This video is going to address some security concerns, uh, specifically with a saddle and a quick-release seat bolt. Having a Brooks saddle is a fantastic way of traveling. There's an endless online battle on whether or not they're right for everyone, but if you can ride one and you get one that's broken in properly, they're wonderful. I'd like to keep mine, and when I leave the bike, I take my handlebar bag, everything else is fairly well attached to the bike, but there's nothing stopping someone from flipping open the quick release and getting away with a $100 saddle and a $120 Nitto seat post. So we're going to make a cable that tethers it to the bike and still allows adjustment. This isn't going to be the be-all and end-all, but it'll stop just a casual person from walking by and snagging it. So what we've done is we've ordered some shark leader. This is the stuff you put after the hook to keep great white sharks from biting through the line. Uh, their teeth are very sharp and they are very powerful so they can cut through a lot of stuff. They use a high strand stainless steel wire and that should work fine for the purposes we're doing today. I found this place, Catch All Tackle. I believe they sell through Amazon. You can also contact them directly. This is 49 strand, 400 pound stainless steel coated leader. It has a clear plastic coating on it so it doesn't scratch anything. I like that a lot better than the plain wire that I was using previously. Came with 30 feet of wire and some of these small double barreled swedges. These are marked as 1.6 millimeter swedges. The cable is marked at 1.4 millimeter. However, with the plastic coating, it's a lot closer to 1.55. So it's an absolute perfect fit for these swedges. I've also cut myself a couple of one and a quarter inch pieces of yellow shrink tubing. This is 5.5 millimeter shrink tubing, has a 50% shrink rate, so it'll sock down nice and tight around the swedge. We're going to start with a 19 inch piece of wire, loop it through the saddle rail, swedge it, shrink wrap it, and then we'll take the final measurement down to the attachment point. I'm planning to attach it on the inside of the seat stays where the rack attaches. The long haul trucker has double sided hourglass shaped brazons, so there are threaded points on the inside of the brazon as well as the outside. I'm going to use a 5 millimeter standard rack mount but I've got a special stainless steel one that has a security head on it. If I ever need to remove this, um, I'm going to be in trouble on the road because I'm not going to take the security tool with me, but this will keep someone from just unscrewing it and walking away. If they have a decent cable cutter, I cut it with a Park Tools cable cutter. And it's a little difficult, but it did cut it. If someone's got a cable cutter, they're going to get it anyway. They came prepared to steal something, they probably will. I'm going to do the first part of this and we'll get back to the next video. Okay, here's the finished cable end attached to the right hand seat rail. I added a piece of two millimeter shrink tubing around the loop section since I didn't have a thimble that would fit this wire and fit over the rail of the saddle. This will prevent scratching in addition to the plastic coating on the wire. Uh, this came out quite well. I'll reinstall the seat post and we'll take a final measurement and make a loop for the other end. I was curious how the cable routing was going to work and it worked out surprisingly well. The cable comes off of the seat rail parallel with the seat post, obviously, 
and I was pleased to find out that there's enough room behind the binder bolt in the gap in the back of this Salsa quick release so that the cable could fit in comfortably behind the binder bolt and that'll keep it in place there. From there it comes down, goes through a small zip tie that holds my rear brake cable and the braided covered wire that runs to my tail light from the dynamo. From there it'll go inside the brake cable stop and down to the inside of the mounting bolt on the rack brace on. You can see on the far chain stay that there's an interior threaded portion as well. I'll attach to the inside one on the near side. I'm going to leave approximately an extra inch and a half of cable slack down here so that if I need to move the saddle up and down a bit for alleviating knee pain or or any other ailments, sometimes moving the saddle up and down a bit can be a big help and you don't have to do it much. I'm thinking an inch and a half is probably plenty. And then we'll uh, terminate the other end of the cable exactly like the first end and attach it with a 5 millimeter security screw. Here's the other end of the cable that's going to attach to the inside brazon. Through the magic of video editing, you'll never know what I did wrong. So I'm going to have to tell you. Remember to actually crimp the metal swedge prior to heat shrinking the outer piece on. The other end I made it look pretty and it was attached, but it was not secure. I needed to strip off the heat shrink tubing, crimp it, and then redo it. Just a reminder. So this end is ready to go, and I'm going to use my heat gun. This is a puffy t-shirt ink gun. If you've ever seen an old lady at the mall wearing a cat shirt, and it's got like that rubbery, puffy design on it, this is what they use to puff up the ink after they paint it on. I bought this at a yard sale for a dollar. Works really, really well. And according to the side panel, it only draws 350 watts, which is a lot less than a hair dryer or one of the commercial heat guns, but it works just fine. I think it's because of the small opening at the end that the heat actually comes out of that it's very concentrated. So it works really well. We will slide that up, heat shrink that on. I'll use a round um, ice pick to round out that loop a little to get a five millimeter screw through there. We'll attach it and we'll be done. The only change I would have made would be I'd probably use black shrink tubing if I had my choice. Be a little stealthier, you might not notice it. A little yellow bit hanging from the saddle might be a tip off to someone and if they are prepared to cut something, they'll find it right away. I'd rather have them figure out what, try to figure out why the cable, why the seat didn't come out right away and then find the cable. But since I already had a giant bag of miscellaneous yellow pieces, I just used it. So, hopefully this will keep my saddle attached to the bike and will make a similar set of cables to attach the panniers to the racks temporarily with a padlock when we leave the bike and we can't take everything with us.